Welcome to PowerPoint Do's and Don'ts. This series covers the concepts and skills needed to create effective presentations. Though I've referred to PowerPoint in the title, the term slideware is the more general reference to the genre of software like OpenOffice Impress, Apple's Keynote, or even old-fashioned transparencies that do what PowerPoint does but are less widely used. PowerPoint has become synonymous with slideshows to the point that no one knows what I'm talking about unless I name drop up front. So keep that in mind as we proceed. The words do's and don'ts also appear in the title, and I want to start with an exemplar of what not to do as a motivator for subsequent coverage of best practices. We begin then with the infamous space shuttle case study first described by Edward Tufte in his book, Visual Explanations. The Challenger disaster took place in the 1980s. I was alive back then and recall the event vividly. At launch, there was a puff of smoke observed emanating from one of the solid rocket boosters of the shuttle, signaling a leak. As the rocket gained altitude, the leak expanded, finally igniting the liquid booster fuel tank, causing the shuttle to explode. The official explanation for the disaster was the infamous O-ring problem. The shuttle launched on a record cold day for the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, causing the rubber O-ring seals in the booster rockets to harden up and not seal the hot gases within. What most people don't know is that this was a known issue with the sealant rings. And in fact, the day before the shuttle launch, the makers of the booster rockets, Morton Thiokol, flew to the launch site and implored NASA not to launch the shuttle. The trouble began with the title slide of their presentation. Already, they're using jargon, SRM for solid rocket motors, and all uppercase block lettering, which is less readable than mixed case characters. It gets worse with the very next slide, which is difficult to read, jargony, and also rendered in low resolution uppercase characters. The third slide is worse still. The text is jargony, indiscernibly small, with handwritten scrawled notations. Even the diagrams were difficult to understand, though the attention of the politicos present was probably long lost by now. They were motivated to go to launch because Krista McAuliffe was to be the first teacher in space aboard this launch. So, given that the disaster predicted by the Morton Thiokol engineers was borne out the very next day, in many respects, we can blame the Challenger disaster on a lousy slide presentation. The question is, could it happen again? Unfortunately, the answer is, it did. History repeated itself with the Columbia disaster. The second shuttle explosion also resulted from a known issue cited by Boeing engineers as a concern before launch. Stupidly choosing to launch on another cold day in Florida, this time some insulating foam, which gets brittle in cold weather, broke off at launch, striking and damaging the re-entry insulating material on the leading edge of the shuttle wing. Again, engineers from Boeing flew to the Space Center and implored that NASA have the astronauts inspect the exterior of the craft and make repairs in orbit. This is an actual slide derived from their presentation. It's jargony and packed too densely with text. Again, failing to convince their audience the Columbia shuttle was doomed. This time, PowerPoint was used, so we can more strongly argue that a lousy PowerPoint slideshow was to blame. Certainly most life and death decisions aren't contingent on the success or failure of a slideshow. We've seen, however, how the medium can negatively impact the message. And I'm sure you've been subjected to your fair share of soporific presentations. In the next installment, we'll look at best practices in planning, implementing, and delivering presentations that apply to any slideware generator, be it Keynote, Impress, or PowerPoint.